The Math Curse by John Sieska and Lane Smith. Did you ever wake up to one of those days where everything is a problem? You have 10 things to do, but only 30 minutes until your bus leaves. Is there enough time? You have three shirts and two pairs of pants. Can you make one good outfit? Then you start to wonder, why does everything have to be such a problem? Why do two apples always have to be added to five oranges? Why do four kids always have to divide 12 marbles? Why can't you just keep 10 cookies without someone taking three away? Why? Because you're the victim of a math curse. That's why. But don't despair. This is one girl's story of how that curse can be broken. The Math Curse by John Sieska and Lane Smith. Here we can see a big division sign. At the top it says if the sum of my nieces and nephews equals 15 and their product equals 54 and I have more nephews and nieces, how many nephews and how many nieces is this book dedicated to? Who knows? If I divide the number of years my dad was an accountant, 30, by the number of years I needed, to, needed help with my math, 30, I get one, one, deduction for dad, the CPA, IS. The Math Curse. On Monday, in math class, Mrs Fibonacci says, you know, you can think of almost everything as a problem. On Tuesday, I started having problems. I wake up at 7.15. It takes me 10 minutes to get dressed, 15 minutes to eat my breakfast, and one minute to brush my teeth. Suddenly, it's a problem. One, if my bus leaves at eight, will I make it on time? Two, how many minutes in one hour? Three, how many teeth in one mouth? I look in my closet and the problems get worse. I have one white shirt, three blue shirts, three striped shirts, and that one ugly plaid shirt my uncle Zeno sent me. How many shirts is that altogether? How many shirts would I have to throw away? How many shirts would I have if I threw away that awful plaid shirt? When will Uncle Zeno quit sending me such ugly shirts? I'm getting a little worried. Everything seems to be a problem. Milk. I take the milk out for my cereal and wonder. One, how many quarts in a gallon? Two, how many pints in one quart? Three, how many inches in a foot? Four, how many feet in a yard? Five, how many yards in a neighborhood? How many inches in a pint? How many feet in my shoes? I don't even bother to take out the cereal. I don't want to know how many flakes are in a bowl. Mrs. Fibonacci has obviously put a math curse on me. Everything I look at or think about has become a math problem. I try to get the bus without thinking about anything. But there are five kids already on the bus. Five. Five kids get on at my stop. Five more get on at the next stop. And five more get on at the last stop. Hmm. True or false? What is the bus driver's name? Hmm. Interesting. Mrs. Fibonacci has this chart of what month everybody's birthday is in. Hmm. 
Let's take a look. I wonder where my birthday is. Where is your birthday? Is it January? Is it December? Is it June? Hmm. And how many people have a birthday in January? It reaches up to number seven. Hmm. February seems a little less. It seems to have, they seem to have fewer people with a birthday in February. It seems to be around six. How many in your birthday month? One, which month has the most birthdays? Ooh. Two, which month has the fewest? Hmm. Three, why doesn't February have a W? That's a good question. Four, don't you think this chart looks sort of like a row of buildings? Come to think of it, it does. Five, do you ever look at the clouds and think they look like something else? Six, what does this ink blot look like to you? It looks like a young boy, smiling. The whole morning is one problem after another. There are 24 kids in my class. I just know someone is going to bring in cupcakes to share. We sit in four rows with six desks in each row. Four times six is 24. What if Mrs Fibonacci rearranges the desks to make six rows? Interesting. What if she does eight rows, three rows, two rows? Hmm. Maybe you need something to help you out with that problem. I count the 24 kids in our class again. This time in twos. Jake scratches his paper with one finger. How many fingers are in our class? Good question. Casey pulls Eric's ear. How many ears are in our class? The new girl, Kelly, sticks her tongue out at me. How many tongues are in our class? I'm about to really lose it when the lunch bell rings. Unfortunately for me, lunch is pizza and apple pie. Each pizza is cut into eight equal slices. Each pie is cut into six equal slices. And you know what that means? Fractions. One, if I want two slices of pizza, should I ask for one eighth, two eighths, or just two slices of pizza? Two, what is another way to say one half of an apple pie? Is it A, two sixths, B, three sixths, C, la moitié d'une tart au pomme? Three, which tastes greater? A, half a pizza, B, half an apple pie. I think I know the answer to that one. We haven't studied fractions yet, so I take 12 carrot sticks, three at a time, and eat them two at a time. That'll help. In the afternoon, every subject is a problem. Social studies is a geography problem. The Mississippi River is about 4,000 kilometers long. An M&M &M is about one centimetre long. There are 100 centimetres in a metre and 1,000 metres in a kilometre. Estimate how many M&Ms it would take to measure the length of the Mississippi. Two, estimate how many M&Ms you would eat if you had to measure the Mississippi River with M&Ms. There's a bonus. Can you spell Mississippi without any M's? And M's. M I double S I double S I P P I. English is a word problem. If mail plus box equals mailbox, one, does lipstick equal stick equal lip? Two, does tuna fish plus tuna fish equal fauna fish? <laughs> Fizz ed is a sports problem. In 1919, a man called Babe Ruth hit 29 home runs playing baseball. He batted 0 .322 and made $40,000. Congratulations. In 1991, the average Major League Baseball player hit 15 home runs, 
batted 0.275 and made $840,000. Congratulations. Circle the correct answer. Babe Ruth is less than the average modern baseball player. Babe Ruth more than the average modern baseball player. Babe Ruth is equal to the average modern baseball player. These are special symbols. Less than, more than, equal to. In art, we finally get to relax with a connect the dot picture. Here is my picture. Mm, very Kandinsky. Too bad it turns out to be a connect the ancient Mayan numerals picture. Oh no. Math is just a total problem. Mrs Fibonacci says there are many ways to count. She asks us to give some examples. Russell counts on his fingers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well done, Russell. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Molly says, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Mrs Fibonacci says, I always count 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Very clever. Kids only have two fingers on each hand. They count 1, 2, 3, 10. The top of the book is missing here. And on the planet binary, kids only have one finger on each hand. They count 1, 10. It's very strange. 1. What are the next five numbers in each sequence above? Interesting. 2. Do you think Mrs Fibonacci has been to the planet Tetra? <gasps> 3. How would you bowl if you lived on the planet Binary? I suppose you would bowl pretty badly. Cupcakes. We are just about to go home when Rebecca remembers the special birthday cupcakes her mum made. There are 24 kids in the class. Rebecca has 24 cupcakes. So, what's the problem? Rebecca wants Mrs Fibonacci to have a cupcake too. <gasps> Somebody's going to have to share. Everybody is going crazy trying to figure out what fraction of a cupcake each person will get. I'm the first to figure out the answer. I raise my hand to tell Mrs Fibonacci I'm allergic to cupcakes. She can have mine. Everyone, 24, believes me and gets one, one cupcake. No one, zero, has figured out fractions. I stagger out of school. I'm a math zombie now. I have to find something to break this math curse. I decide to try chocolate. Good. My favourite candy bar is usually 50 cents. Good price. But guess what? Today, it's on sale for 50% off. That's about half. So half of 50, I wonder what it is. Minus B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Very complicated. Where A equals the number of letters in your first name, B equals your age, and C equals your shoe size. I decide to buy licorice instead. Good choice. I pull out my money. I have a $5 bill and a $1 bill, and a quarter, and a penny. George Washington is on both the quarter and the $1 bill. George Washington. George Washington. Who's this? Abraham Lincoln is on both the penny and the $5 bill. Abraham, Abraham. So which is true? A, one Washington equals 25 Lincolns, B, 5 Washingtons equal 1 Lincoln. C, 1 Washington equals 100 Lincolns. D, 1 Lincoln equals 20 Washingtons. Don't forget to show your working out. You get extra credit. How do you think Thomas Jefferson feels about all this? Hmm, Thomas Jefferson is on another banknote, and it isn't the 1, and it isn't the 5. Maybe it's the 10, or the 20. Who knows? I am now a Rabin math lunatic. What if this keeps up for a whole year? How many minutes of math madness would that be? What's your problem? Says my sister. 
365 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes. I snarl. Dinner brings no relief. While passing the mashed potatoes, Mum says, What your father says is false. Dad helps himself to some potatoes and says, What your mother says is true. I think about that for a minute. If what Mum says is true, then what Dad says is false. But if what Dad says is false, then what Mum says is true. But if what Mum says isn't true, then Dad says isn't false. Hmm, but that can't be true because he says that what Mum says is true and she says that's what he says is false. What a conundrum. Can that be true? I think about that. Then I think about it some more. Then I think I'd better go to bed. I undo eight buttons plus two shoelaces. I subtract two shoes. I multiply times two socks and divide by three pillows to get five sheep. Remainder one, which is all I need to count before I fall asleep. Then the problems really begin. I dream. I'm trapped in a room with no doors and no windows. The room is covered with a lifetime of problems. I have only one piece of chalk. How do I get out? I'm about to give up and die when the answer to my problems come to me. Fractions. I break the chalk in half. Then I put two halves together. One half plus one half equals the whole piece of chalk. I put the hole on the wall and jump out. I'm free. I wake up Wednesday morning at 7.15. It takes me 10 minutes to get dressed, 15 minutes to eat my breakfast and one minute to brush my teeth. My bus leaves at 8. What time will I be ready? 7.41. No problem. I've broken the math curse. I can solve any problem and life is just great until science class when Mr Newton says, You know, you can think of almost everything as a science experiment. Oh, Mr Newton, how could you?